day, but we are back again. So sorry for that, y'all, but you know, got a lot of stuff going on in this crazy ass world of mine. So let's get back to it. Welcome back to Eddie B TV. I am, of course, Eddie B. Nice to see y'all. And we are back at you again today for another reaction video. And on this uh, random Sunday that we're getting into today, uh, we're going to get into a couple of videos. And uh, before I get to that, I just wanted to say my fault, y'all, for missing Music Saturday yesterday. Um, going through a little bit of physical pains, you know, the new job was kind of getting to me a little bit more than I thought it would, you know, from the, from the beginning standpoint. But yeah, I'm hanging in there. So I'm back again and I'm just trying to take it easy. It's my day off again. So uh, yeah, we back at it. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get to the two videos we got today. And uh, for the first one, we're gonna start off with something a little bit different. Um, you know, the last couple of days, you know, I'm wearing my Mariners fitted, you know, because uh, uh, last couple games, went for 14 wins in a row, two losses in a row, but hey, hey, wasn't gonna last forever, but you know what, hey, man, you know, just gotta <laughs> wipe my eyes a little bit <laughs> when it comes to that. And hopefully we can win one today. But yeah, I was scrolling through some uh, MLB stuff and I came across this video here. And uh, the title of this one is going to be called MLB Strangest Areas Inside Stadiums. Okay. Well, um, I don't know exactly what to expect from this one. Maybe a couple, you know, just off the top of my head that I can think of. They're talking about strange areas inside stadiums. So I don't know if it's like... Um, where the fans sit. I don't know if it's like a, a crazy wild scoreboard or even something on the field. I have no idea what to expect with this, but I saw it and I thought, why not get to it? So yeah, we're going to get into this one, like I said, and see what we're in for. MLB, strangest areas inside stadiums. And if you like this reaction, please boom on the like button for me one time. Subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, and uh, leave a nice comment for your boy. Constructive critiques, leave a nice suggestion or request, and uh, throw a couple zingers at your boy. Friendly dialogue, no drama here. And uh, yes, that's how we uh, want to keep it here, if you don't mind. So yeah, man, um, went through a little bit too much, man. Had to go shopping for like back braces and... Uh, you know, I mean, icy hot patches and things like that. Yeah, I know. You know, the job is not, you know, difficult. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know, a little bit physically strenuous, you know? And uh, yeah, I mean, I had to handle business, man. Because if I didn't, man, I'd be worse off. And I probably wouldn't be doing today or the rest of the week for that matter. But yeah, man, uh, we back at it again. So let's go ahead and see what's going on here. Let's do it. MLB, strangest areas inside stadiums. Right here on Eddie B TV, round one of this random Sunday. Let's check it out. Quit my tobacco nut hits again. <laughs> All right, let's get situated with this one here. And here we go. Cal's Hill was an angled hill at the back of Dead Center Field in Minute Maid Park. The hill was an original part of the stadium in the year 2000 when it opened, but it was taken out before the 2017 season. Since then, the Astros have had a normal center field. Cal's Hill made hitting a home run to Dead Center extremely difficult because it was 436 feet. Ooh. It also made catching fly balls very challenging and potentially dangerous as well for outfielders. <laughs> yeah. There was a warning track before you would reach the hill, but when you're looking oh. up chasing a ball and suddenly running uphill, <laughs> it can't be easy. That's so to stupid. make things worse, there was also a pole sticking out of the ground on the field of play, and it was just a few feet in front of the wall. Wow. The pole was padded in case of collisions, but still really weird. It was rare for players to hit the ball to that part of the field, but it did happen, and it made some interesting plays. It was removed in 2016, and this is what the center field looks like today. Good. <laughs> the field was an idea of Astros president Tal Smith, and the idea was said to be inspired by the strange outfield at Crossley Field, which was home of the Cincinnati Reds from 1912 to 1970. Mm -hmm. There have also been several other fields that have had things on the field of play. Yankee Stadium has Monument Park beyond the outfield walls. Yeah. Monument Park is a museum that has plaques and retired numbers of some of the greatest members in the Yankees organization. But for many years, it used to be on the field of play. When old Yankee Stadium what? opened in 1923, they had a flagpole in center field. Over the years, the Yankees started adding monuments next to the flagpole. This was very interesting to see on the field. And I finally in the 70s, that. they decided to move it behind the wall instead of in front of it because it really got in the way of outfielders. Oh, no. come on. Why would they let that happen? Another stadium that had a flagpole on the field was Old Tiger Stadium. Uh -huh. 
For many years, it was in the outfield just in front of the wall. And when the Tigers moved to Comerica Park in 2000, they also had a flagpole on the field. But this time, it was up against the fence and not in front of it. In 2003, when the dimensions were changed, it was moved off the field. The old Tiger Stadium was also known for having interesting overhangs that would go over the field. Oh, I remember that too. Let's talk about one more field that also had something that was actually on the field. The polo grounds had bullpens that were in fair territory in the outfield. <laughs> the polo grounds opened in 1890 and closed in 1963. It was home of several MLB teams over the years, and it was originally built for polo, which is why it had its unique shape. Okay. The dimensions were crazy, with super close left and right field, and an oh, insanely wow. long center field. <laughs> the bullpens for each team were located in fair territory I'll in right and left center. It's not uncommon to see bullpens on the field, but they're usually in foul territory when they are. Even then, they can sometimes affect plays. The main reason why this would work, though, is because of how deep the outfield was, so the ball wasn't hit there often. Hmm. The next field that has several strange things inside of it is Fenway Park in Boston. Yeah. Fenway Park opened in 1912 and has been the home of the Red Sox ever since. It was built between several streets and has been renovated several times over the years. This has caused some strange things. Most people know about the Green Monster, which is a 37 foot tall wall in left field. If you hit it over the Green Monster, the ball goes out of the whole stadium. And if you hit it off the Green Monster, the ball could bounce anywhere. You can also go inside the Green Monster as well. The whole outfield has very weird dimensions and shapes. There's a triangle in center field, and in right field, the wall curves just before the foul pole. That makes it just 302 feet to hit a home run to right field. Oh, but to man. do that, you have to hit it just around the pesky pole. There are also man. seats in Fenway that have their view blocked by beams, and other seats that aren't even facing the field. Oh, what? How could they do that to the fans? The second oldest stadium behind Fenway Park is Wrigley Field, which opened in 1914 and is Shot the home down. of the Chicago Cubs. They also have some strange seats that have the view of the field obstructed. But one of the most famous things in Wrigley Field is the ivy on the walls of the outfield. Uh -huh. Most outfields have a padded wall, but at Wrigley Field, the wall is brick with ivy growing all over it. This makes the wall dangerous to run into, and sometimes baseballs get lost in the ivy as well, which makes it a ground rule double. Oh, wow, that's funny. In San Diego, the Padres play at Petco Park. Mm -hmm. If you look, you can see in left field, there's a building that appears to be right up against left field. This is the Western Metal Supply Company building. Yeah. The building was built originally in 1909 and became a historic landmark in 1978. <laughs> Petco Park didn't open until 2004, and when the Padres were building the stadium, they decided to build it around the Western Metal Supply building. Today, inside the building, there's suites, a team store, and a restaurant. Hmm, At cool. American Family Field in Milwaukee, there's a giant slide past left field. <laughs> this is used by the Brewers mascot to slide down when the Brewers hit home runs. That's cool. It looks like a scary slide to go down because of how it hangs right above the seats in left field. Oh. But some fans have gone down it as well in the past, and it's completely safe. Okay. At Coors Field, where the Rockies play, they have a little forest behind the center field wall. There are rocks, a pond, and many trees. That's nice. It's a nice scene to look at, and sometimes players hit home runs <laughs> that get lost in the woods. I remember that game. Rogers Center in Toronto, where the Blue Jays play, has a hotel in the ballpark. It's called the really? Toronto Marriott City Center Hotel. This hotel has rooms where you can see onto the field during games. Oh, wow. It's located in center field, and it also has a restaurant as part of the hotel where you can watch games from as well. In the Miami Marlins Stadium, they used to have some weird quirks. There was an interesting angle in center field, and just to the left of it was a home run sculpture. When a home run was hit, the sculpture would light up, but many people didn't like it. Hmm. The stadium was changed several years ago, and the sculpture was taken out. Uh, they also changed the colors. Yeah. <laughs> there were also aquariums with live fish in them behind home plate, and one time a foul ball hit it and cracked it. None of the fish were injured, but this has also been removed. Mm. In Tampa Bay, they have a raised tank beyond right center field. There are oh, live yeah. rays swimming around in the tank, and sometimes players have hit home runs directly into it. Oh, yeah.
I've seen a few Mariners games where uh, home runs have been hitting the Rays tank. It's pretty cool, actually. <clears throat> Fans can go up and touch the Rays during certain times. Oh, I ain't Tropicana no Rays. Field also has catwalks that hang from the ceiling in the stadium. If you hit certain ones, it's a home run. Sometimes balls have been hit up and gotten stuck in them and haven't come down. Ugh. <laughs> Oh, that's Francisco Lindor right there. Okay. He's with the Mets now. The Oakland Coliseum is an odd stadium. Oh. One of the weirdest parts of it is the large amount of foul ground that it has. This might be because the stadium was made to host both football and baseball games <coughs> and created lots of extra space. There have also been known to have families of possums that live on the field. Damn, really? Hmm. Little poor possums. Up. No more commentary? What's going on here? Still Petco. Oh, okay. That's the end of it. Okay. That's a weird way to end it. With no outro or nothing like that. But yeah, that's okay. Man, you know what? There was um, a few things in there that I did not realize before, man. That's actually pretty strange. Well, hence the title, Strangest Areas Inside Stadiums. But uh, wow, very interesting to see that, man. It's going to be very fun to talk about, too. All right, y'all, that was MLB with uh, Strangest Areas Inside Stadiums. Hmm. Well, I mean, the first one was a very obvious one to me because it's within, you know, you know, my time frame a little bit. So were a few others. But um, the, at uh, Minute Maid Park in Houston, <clears throat> when I first heard about um, Towels Hill, I thought, who in the hell would allow something like that on a baseball field? That has to be one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. And it's not a knock on Houston, you know, or whatever, just because, you know, Houston's a division rival of my Mariners, and I can't stand them just as a fan of baseball. But, yeah, I always thought that was very, very stupid. <laughs> and I was, like, relieved, relieved when they finally took it out. Not just because it's very dangerous, like they said, but um, it also, you know, is closer, like a 409 foot home run as opposed to 436. Yeah, that's trippy right there. Sometimes, you know, the way that they um, engineer these stadiums, that uh, it just does not add up to me, you know. And I remember too when he was talking about, um, um, and this is what I wanted to say. I play MLB the Show sometimes on PS4. And uh, I got to be honest with you, I did not know this, but Polo Grounds was actually uh, is actually a stadium you can choose on there. And I thought it was a made up stadium. I have no idea that it was real. And when I when I think about it now, because sometimes I pick it in the reason and the reason I picked the stadium to play on is because down the left or right field line, it's an easy home run. If you just hit like a little bit of a routine pop out to left or right or something like that. And I've gotten quite a few home runs, if I may say so. But I had no idea that was real. So I feel pretty stupid for that. But no, man, that is strange. The, the fact that anyone would allow baseball games to be played there is insane. Because I'm surprised that um, from a right-handed to left-handed hitters, they didn't just go pull crazy all the time. They, I don't get why you know they would let that happen. But um, what else can I say? Oh, the Yankee Stadium. You know, the fact that they would actually put concrete memorials on the field of play is absolutely ludicrous. Like, why? I mean, granted, it was a different time in history, man. But you know what? Why would someone alter gameplay with something like that? You'd think that they wouldn't even allow something like that at all. I don't, I don't understand. And, you know, just to, like, put it out there. I am a fan of baseball and I have no idea and I repeat no idea whatsoever why every single baseball field is different. I have no idea. And I, even if someone had an explanation to it, it still wouldn't make any damn sense because you know something? Have the same amount of a uh, link down the left and right field line. Just boom, a little circle, you know, right center, left center, and center field. Why does everything have to be different? You know, it, that, that absolutely makes no sense. That's the one thing about baseball that I don't like is the different uh, MLB stadiums. You know, when uh, we had uh, the Kingdom uh, a long time ago, and he was talking about how in polo grounds that um, the bullpens were in fair territory in the field of play. You know, we had that in the foul territory thing, you know, um, 
uh, on either side, the visitors bullpen and the home bullpen. And now it's different, you know, because it's um, out past the outfield walls. And uh, it, it's uh, interesting there to know that it's better off because now, even though with that, though, they always have these little, like these little curves that were the, uh, if, you, uh, if you hit a ball down the first or third base line, it could still hit there and, you know, bounce off there. And then the outfielder confuses them and then they got to run towards it. I don't understand why everyone has to make everything difficult when it comes to this. I really don't understand. I wish they would change it only because it creates ridiculously stupid advantages. You know, like they were talking about with Fenway Park, the Green Monster, I think is ridiculous. You know, it's obviously something that's very uh, significant to, to, to Red Sox history, and that's fine. Everyone can have their history. But I always feel that as an outfielder in Major League Baseball, you should always have a chance with a um, certain height of the wall so you can leap up and rob home runs and things like that. You know, the fact that it happens like that, does it, it just doesn't add up to me. That's all I'm saying. And I didn't even like it in the kingdom when they had um, the, uh, the scoreboard in right field and then they had um, um, and then they had uh, low walls a little bit towards where you got to like almost right center a little bit or just like probably center field. But I just wish that every stadium was the same as far as the wall height and then uh, just dimensions were the same, you know. And then let me see a couple other weird areas. The slide in, in Milwaukee, that's not really anything that alters gameplay. It's actually kind of just like a cool, strange additive to the stadium, which I think is pretty cool. And from what I understand is, like my man said, whenever the Brewers hit home runs, um, uh, the mascot goes down the slide. And that's that's pretty cool right there. It's actually a pretty uh, cool thing with the stadium. Um, other things, a little thing in Miami, but for the Marlins. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I after their original uh, logo in jerseys, when they switched it up the first time, I, I hated that because the Marlins, if I'm not rooting for my Mariners, the Marlins are actually another favorite team of mine, along with the Colorado Rockies and um, let me see, what other teams do I like? I like the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, let me see, any other American teams, American League teams? I like the Kansas City Royals a little bit. You know, they're pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, but that one game where I saw a Mariners player in Colorado, I remember watching that game. They got a little nice setup in the out, about past the outfield walls. That's pretty cool. But you know, this is more to me about the stuff that's on the field of play. And talking about Towers Hill too, like in uh, Detroit Tiger Stadium, why would you have a flagpole? Like, say a ball is hit there, and then a player, you know, is running and bangs into that wall and probably hurts himself, probably paralyzes himself or something like that. Yeah, when it comes to um, stadium engineering, let, let's get it right, y'all. I mean, we, we in 2022 for crying out loud, man. Every stadium should have a retractable roof so there's no more rain outs or nothing like that. Everybody should have things working out, man. But, I don't know, maybe it's a money issue or maybe everyone's trying to hold on to something classic. I don't know. But either way, man, here in Seattle, we had a dome all these years with the King Dome so we didn't have to, have to worry about weather at all. But now we got a retractable roof, so that way if it does rain, we cover it up. And if it's a nice day, we open it up. See how easy that is? I don't understand for the life of me why it doesn't go on. But you know something? I could rant about this all day. But everything is different, which kind of makes it its own um, level of cool. So you got to give it that. But some things I just wish were a little bit the same across the board. But yeah, man, this is a pretty cool um, video right here because there were some things I didn't know that I found out and uh, some things that I didn't know that I was able to like, you know, reminisce about in strange ways. But yeah, man, very cool video and I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off right there. One more time, MLB with strangest areas inside stadiums. And if you like that reaction, please put them on the like button for me one more time. Uh, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell. And of course, as always, Leave a nice comment for your boy. Constructive critiques, leave a nice suggestion or request, and uh, throw a couple zingers at your boy. Friendly dialogue, no drama here. And uh, yes, let's keep it that way. So, yeah, man, it's going to be Eddie BTV signing off. One more game here. Uh, round one in the books of this random Sunday, man. Glad to be back again. Sorry I had to take a day off one more time, man. Uh, what, I, what I was going to get to for uh, Music Saturday yesterday will happen this weekend for sure. And I'm going to try my hardest not to let the pain of this new job get to me any more than it already has. And uh, continue to keep this show on the road, you know what I'm saying? And um, I haven't been uh, really commenting too much, um, uh, but replying back in the comments. You know, I've just been really tired. And uh, I still see what you guys are saying out there. And I'm, you know, replying sometimes. But sometimes I'm just kind of like... Just gotta get some rest, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I'll be tired most days. 
But yeah, <laughs> yesterday, man, you know, so many cars coming through the toll booth, man, and it was just like, man, it didn't like get within to like maybe within like 500 feet for like the, the whole second half of my ship. Pretty crazy. I was going pretty fast, you know, because I got lightning quick hands and all that good stuff. But yeah, man, it was pretty, uh, the time went by pretty fast, but it was still pretty uh, intense to see all that, you know. But uh, yeah, man, uh, thank y'all for tuning in one more time to this one, man. Uh, I had fun getting to this one. It was pretty cool to see all the, the strange things that go on uh, in um, baseball history when it comes to things inside stadiums and all that. But uh, yeah, man, very intense, and uh, hopefully it'll change, you know, selfishly for the way I want one day, but it probably won't. But yeah, I got one more video to go, and hope you guys like it, and uh, until next reaction, love and appreciate y'all. Peace.